Welcome to Plurpen Diode T. In this video we will take a look on the Sener diode. This is the graphical symbol for the Sener diode. At the top the cathode and at the bottom we have the anode. So this is all pretty similar to the standard diode. In forward bias electricity will be passed through the diode. In reverse bias we are not allowing any current to flow through the diode. Actually that's not completely true, that's why I have an orange arrow here. There are certain circumstances when the Sener diode will allow the current to flow through even in reverse bias. Before we take another look on this behavior, we will first check out the other graphical symbols for the Sener diode. This could look like this with the little addition here on the right hand side or also with a bit more angled versions of those little wings. In real life the parts would look like this or also like this. So that's basically exactly the same as a normal diode. So you cannot really differentiate between a normal diode and a Sino diode just from looking at the package. What's also exactly the same as a standard diode is that we have those little black or in this case white labels on the top which is indicating the cathode. But let's dive right into the behavior of this special type of diode. So first a bit of theory. Let's take a look on the chart. On the y-axis we have the current through the diode and on the x-axis we have the voltage applied on the diode. In case we use the diode in forward bias our chart will look something like this. So we have a steep incline in current at a certain point. This incline we would normally see just below one volt depending on the material of the diode whether it's silicon, germanium or any other material. But what if we apply reverse bias? In this case our chart will be stable at zero but then at a certain point it will allow a significant current to flow. So the speciality of the Sener diode is that this significant current at the reverse bias is not occurring because you just destroyed the diode or something, that's actually on purpose. That's what we call the Sener effect. So far we also call this certain voltage where we can pass current through the diode in reverse bias the Sener voltage, which is in our case 1.8 volts. Short form would be UZ. If the Sener voltage is 1.8 volts or 5 volts or 20 volts, this is totally up to the type of diode you buy. So you can buy Sino diodes with all different kind of Sino voltages. You can simply google Sino diode 1.8 volt or something and you will get some suggestions of manufacturers and types of Sino diodes with a specific Sino voltage. But let's take a look how the Sino diode behaves inside a circuit. Adding a power supply on the left hand side with plus at the top and minus at the bottom will result in a reverse bias. So the electrons want to pass the Sino diode but there is a barrier. They cannot move through the Sino diode in reverse bias. But let's increase the voltage. We're starting at zero volt. Of course nothing is happening. Increasing the voltage to one volt and of course the diode is still blocking the flow. Increasing further 1.5 volts. No impact at all. Continuing our rise of voltage to 1.8 volt and out of a sudden we arrived at the U set, the Sino voltage and now the diode is slowly beginning to let some current pass through the diode in reverse bias. But of course in case we increase the voltage furthermore we will just have a short circuit and that's something we want to prevent. So let's take a closer look on our circuit. Let's assume we have a power supply of around 3.3 volts. Our voltage drop via the Sino diode is still 1.8 volts because the Sino voltage is 1.8 volts. So this voltage drop is constant. As mentioned before in this case we would be in a short circuit. So the current would basically destroy our Sino diode sooner or later. To prevent this we will just add a resistor after the diode. So in this case we have a proper circuit. We still have the 1.8 volts as a voltage drop via the Sino diode and we will have the rest of the voltage dropping via the resistor which is in our case 1.5 volts. So that's a very important part about the Sino diode. 
once we arrived at the Zener voltage, once the reverse bias current is enabled. This doesn't mean that the Zener diode is now functioning as a switch, just closing the circuit and all the voltage will drop at the resistor. No, the Zener diode will hold those Zener voltage, in our case 1.8 volts. To illustrate this behavior, let's take a look on an analogy involving water. Assuming we're looking at a river flowing through a channel from the left to the right, the water will flow until it hits a barrier. In our case, a special gate, which is of course representing the Zener diode. So let's assume the current water level is at roughly 2.5 meters, which is putting a certain pressure, so to speak, voltage towards the gate, aka the Zener diode. At this stage, the gate is closed, no current will flow, no water will flow. But now the water level will rise a bit and the water level ends up at 3.0 meters in our case, which happens to be exactly the water pressure needed to open the gate. So those 3 meters in water level would result in a certain pressure on the gate, which would be our U set, our Zener voltage. So the Zener voltage is 3 volts or so to speak 3 meters. So at this point the gate will open slightly and enable a certain amount of water to flow through the gate to pass through the gate. So as more water we throw at the gate, as more water pressure we put at the gate, as more the gate will open. Making sure that the water level before the gate is always at 3.0 meters and everything else will just be forwarded to whatever happens after the gate. And that's the exact same thing with the Zener diode. It will make sure that the voltage level before the Zener diode is not exceeding the Zener voltage. All voltage arriving above the Zener voltage will just be passed through to whatever happens after the Zener diode. I hope this illustration helps you to understand the behavior of a Zener diode in a circuit and enables you to apply this knowledge to your use case. These are all the basics you need to know about the behavior of the Zener diode, why it's special and how to use it. In case this explanation was helpful to you, make sure to give it a thumbs up so YouTube will present it to others and help them as well. If you have any further questions, drop a comment below and make sure to be subscribed for more content and more topics around electronics and IoT. See you next time.